Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. And um, <laughs> we're covering the wrestler, but I'll let my other two co-hosts introduce themselves, gentlemen. Uh, uh, um, I'm <laughs> Mally. Actually, lives in Hollywood. <laughs> oh, we got to talk about that. Yeah, amazing. And, yeah, the other one here. Yeah, and I'm I'm Nathan Simmons. All you gotta do is believe me, brother. <laughs> and this is uh, the Silver's Linings playlist. A podcast where we uh, try to find the silver lining mm. in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And boy, did we pick a fucking bleak one to start the season <laughs> with, man. Woo! Yeah, season six, we're back. We are back after a long hiatus. Much like the dinosaurs, we are yes. back. What? What's huh? the subtitle for that movie? We're back. A dinosaur? A dinosaur story. story. Yeah. Yeah, we're a podcast story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a Star Wars story. We're yeah. back. <laughs> uh, El Camino was a silver lining story. I love it. So... If you're new to the show, first of all, you're joining us at the absolute perfect time because, mm. as I previously mentioned, this is the start of our sixth season. Can you believe it? Guys, we've been away for a long time. Mm -hmm. A lot of things have happened since then. Yeah. Season six, we're finally settling into the routine. Mm -hmm. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> um and keeping up with tradition, mm. we're, of course, um, you know, returning listeners will know this. We always start our seasons off with an Aronofsky movie. Yeah. And honestly, at the time of recording this, there was only two options, mm -hmm. right? There was this. Yeah, we're, we're running out. We're running out real quick. I really hope the whale is going to qualify. Yeah. <laughs> it's shaping up to be that way, I think. It was I this think. and Noah, right? Yeah. We're the only and ones I left. Think, I don't think Noah even qualifies. So we're going to have to start a new tradition real soon. <laughs> right. We talk about unmade Aronofsky movies. Mm -hmm. We do his Batman year one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm in. Mm -hmm. There was something else. What was the other What was the other Aronofsky project that didn't work out? That was something... He was supposed to make The Wolverine. Ooh, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Maybe we just switch over to that for the new tradition. We just do Aronofsky Wolverine adjacent. movies. Oh, oh. That too. That too. We can do that. Uh, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> well, yeah. So as I was mentioning, this is the podcast where we watch movies such as the wrestler mm. that do not have your typical happily ever after ending and i gotta say you know i feel like having a happily ever after ending is almost the new outlier yeah. for most movies because maybe i'm just watching a lot of a24 movies but everything is so dour yeah in 2022 <laughs> everything's either dour or it's meant to set up a sequel yeah so so it still leaves on a cliffhanger yes it's it's you're not gonna believe this ending right yeah you know, someone running in the door at the very last second. By the way, post credits. Here's something else to look forward to. Yeah, it's your cousin Marvin Barry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the wrestler. Um, I've only seen this movie, I think, once before. Yeah, maybe twice. Uh, but it was fantastic to revisit. Mm -hmm. How about you guys? Good, good rewatch. This was this was the second time I've watched it too, uh, and I I remember seeing this. I think the year after it came out because that was when I started to really get into movie collecting. Mm -hmm. That was like around the time like the movie gallery and blockbuster near me like closed down, so I was buying everything I could get my hands on for a mm -hmm. dollar a piece or whatever. But the piece section was all gone, right? The piece section been there. had been uh, wiped clean, <laughs> absolutely cleaned out. <laughs> Um, but I, yeah, I, I, this movie blew me away back in the day. And then it was one of those that I just, I've always wanted to revisit, but I'm never quite in the right mood for it. Mm -hmm. And upon this rewatch, I think it <laughs> might be my favorite Aronofsky just, movie. Right off the top. I just need to address the audience for a second. Um, <laughs> if you hear <laughs> Dustin and I giggling every time Nathan talks, uh -huh. it's because due to some mystery technical. Something's going on with <laughs> Skype and I sound like a clown. <laughs> Nathan's voice sounds like a chipmunk. Yeah, yeah. And I can't fucking handle it. Hopefully not to the folks at home, but he's yeah. Benjamin Buttonig on the podcast yeah. as we record. <laughs> it's insane. I'm baby I'm baby Colin Robinson right now. Oh my god. Hey, guess what? Hey, you guess what? what? Hey, guess what? <laughs> uh, anyway, my Lego set broke and I threw all of it under the bed. 
<laughs> my my good cheese, my fun time boy, Nathan Simmons, my rotten soldier, <laughs> my rotten soldier. <laughs> that being said, I have seen this movie once in theaters, and this mm-hmm. is my second rewatch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, I watched this. I finished this movie about forty five minutes ago. Um, uh-huh. par, par for the course. Yeah, what a way to start a Sunday, <laughs> right, yeah. man? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't think there's an optimum time to watch this movie <laughs> just w- like wake up i got some new s- i bought some new slippers the other day it's like walking on a pillow nice. made my coffee sat down and just got depressed immediately <laughs> oh i don't know how you could get depressed immediately like you start this movie up it's fucking hair metal and a tmnt font over the credits <laughs> oh, i yes. love the bedazzled <laughs> green font which yeah. i'm now just realizing is Probably a reference to the jacket he buys his daughter. Probably. Or just yeah. the era, like the 90s era. Like I I half expected the last credit after written and pro- directed by Darren Aronofsky for it to say <laughs> Mickey Rourke created by Jim Henson Creature Shop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, baby Colin Robinson. <laughs> I, I'm just now realizing, I don't think I've ever seen an Aronofsky movie in theaters. Oh, wow. So, The Whale will be my first. Nice. So, I'm excited for that. Plot twist. Dustin does not watch The Whale in theaters. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> um, can we talk about the Photoshop on the photos in the title sequence? Because it's fucking, ho- it is fucking hilarious, guys. <laughs> oh, I-, I got some notes on that, those opening credits oh, for sure. Oh, buddy. But before we get there, we've got a lot of preamble to do before. Okay. So, it's the first episode of the season, but I got to say, this was kind of like, we- it had to come out today because- mm. The tradition is we always start with Aronofsky, but we really wanted to start a season in October because we're amped up for, you know, our tradition of doing spooky movies mm-hmm. all month of October. So, this kind of was the de facto, but we got to do this one on this date. So, I'm excited for that. So, without further ado, let us discuss The Wrestler. <laughs> so, the year is 2008, mm-hmm. um, and the movie stars Mickey Rourke. Who is not listed on Roger Ebert's website for the review? What he is not listed as the cast what? members. I know it's crazy. That's an in, that's an interesting oversight. Mm-hmm. Todd Barry is listed as the main character. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he reviewed the Matrix. It did not put Keanu Reeves. <laughs> right, Keanu Reeves is in the Matrix. <laughs> man, you got to be watching with some open eyes, man. Um, but Marissa Tomei is listed mm-hmm. as our Evan Rachel Wood and Judah Friedlander, and that's it. Oh, sure. <laughs> Who is in? One scene, thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. but he had yeah. that. He had that thirty rock cachet at this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he had that, that real thirty rock starring power to be listed third. That's right. Um, Todd Berry not mentioned. No one else mentioned. Wow. Um, huh. The budget was six million dollars, mm-hmm. and it managed to gross forty four million dollars. So a huge success for Aron- uh, Aronofsky. Currently sits at maybe our highest rated movie. Either you want to take a guess what this number is. 37. <laughs> uh, 98. 98, exactly. Oh, nice. 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it was nominated for two Oscars, mm-hmm. um, one for Mickey Rourke and one for Marissa Tomei in their respective Best Leading and Best Supporting. Yeah. And they both won. They won their BAFTAs yeah. for the same categories, but not the Oscars. They were just nominated. Who did they lose to that year? Oh, I, I can tell you. My this movie started my uh well cemented my vendetta against Sean Penn <laughs> because he beat three years before four years before this movie he beat Bill Murray for the Oscar for Lost in Translation Ugh. and then he beat Mickey Rourke this year and I was like I'm fucking gunning for was you it Sean milk? Penn yeah I think it was which yeah. is a great performance <laughs> but still. all right well fellas before we get into the trailer um I'm bringing back. A bit, mm. um, a segment that we've done before. Oh God! Just for no. this, mo- just for this episode. Did you du- did you dub over the trailer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. But I am bringing back. Oh God! Drink of the he film. broke him in half. <laughs> I am bringing back drink of the film. <laughs> oh good. Um, which I thought was obvious because it's Marissa Tomei takes one to the face like a champ, and it's a Rolling Rock. Oh sure. So actually, I just just got back from the gas station and got me a little four pack. So. Uh, Nice. Let's get into this trailer. Jesus, that just the opening of that can sounded trashy. Right. <laughs> well, it's rolling rock. What do you expect? <laughs> it's like when you open it, you might as well get an EBT card like the <laughs> second you open it. <laughs>
he's so fucking charming in this movie, even when he's like so, somehow. Yeah. Even when you're just like you are the worst, you're like letting everyone down. He is so charming. But I got to say, it's uh-huh. it's not letting people down in like the most traditional of ways. Cause like, no, of course. We already start off and he's letting people down. Like yeah. he's already let his daughter down and he fucks up. I, and admittedly, this is probably a re- reoccurring thing for him, but yeah. he fucks up one time and he's just late for something and it's... Yeah, but it, it like some, it reinforces sure. everything that they worried about, you know? Sure. It reminds, like, he his character reminds me a lot of, like, Nathan. Like, how Nathan constantly <laughs> lets us it. down. Yeah. Well, I know what we're going to talk about first because it's something we've already talked about off the air. Mm. What our wrestling names would be? Oh, <laughs> no, but I like this idea. Oh, because I got mine. Is it the same as, like, the street you grew up on and your, your, the month you were born? No, no, no. <laughs> Just whatever you come up with. I mean, first off, obviously, we would be a three-way tag team known as the, the Jaded, Jaded Three. Three. Of course. Uh, yeah. Of course. Um, but no, I would, I'm would. i going to keep mine clean, simple. Mm-hmm. Philly Jones. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Nathan, you go ahead. I'm, I'm going to think of one. Uh, I, I have no idea. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dog Pound. <laughs> You got, is, is that, no, that's got to be your phrase, taking you to the dog pound. Yeah. I'm taking you to the pound. <laughs> I'm taking you to pound town. <laughs> I'm taking you to pound town. Get in the ring. Nathan Dog Pound Simmons. <laughs> Bite the rope. Oh, God. <laughs> I got nothing. I, uh, uh, how about this? 12 Great Flavors would be my wrestling name because I'm looking at a bag of gummy bears. Great. Right Good stuff. Good stuff. Or, or two for two, I guess. Uh, is that better? I like that. I like that. So we're going to talk about how this movie takes place in some weird fucked up dystopia where, world. Yeah. where Marissa Tomei is a gentleman's four. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's the most unbelievable part of this movie. And I see a man get hit with fluorescent light bulbs uh-huh. and all kinds of stuff. No, we've we've done the crank movies and this is the least believable yes. thing I've ever seen. Oh, 100%. How does no one want Marissa Tomei but... Rick, Mickey Rourke. It's like, oh, Marissa Tomei is not attractive. Yeah. What? Yeah. No, Mickey Rourke's the only one who sees something special with her. And then otherwise, like, the general populace seems to be like, who let the sea hag into the yeah. club? They might as well be playing who let the dogs out like, <laughs> over the, the strip club speakers. It's oh, my insane. God. That's the song Nathan walks out of, to the ring to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm like, where this is going. This is great. This is good. Uh, but yeah, it's so unbelievable. I mean, I get. The first scene, because it's a bunch of college kids, sure. and one of them makes a joke about, like, oh, you're old enough to be my mom, or whatever, but uh, n- no, everyone sees her, and they, like, audibly gag. They're like, oh, yeah, Marissa Tomei. <laughs> <laughs> Yeesh, McGeesh, come yeah. on, get out of here, goblin. Like, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, but it's so bananas, like, yeah, I don't know, I, I. I, I, I don't, where does this take place? New Jersey, right? Yeah. No, d- d- look, look at it. She's it's Jersey. New Jersey. In fact, I think one of the stores is even called like the New Jersey dollar store. Something. It is. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I can't. I can't. I think isn't that New Jersey state motto? Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. she? So she is like like she's like a New Jersey ten, right? Like <laughs> she she's a New Jersey twenty eight. Dude, she's most state tens. <laughs> Yeah, she's most state tens. Just uh, being real. I mean, like, Nathan, have you been to New Jersey? No, I haven't. <laughs> you can't because you can never leave New Jersey once you go there. That's so. true. It's it's like if you eat something in the fairy world, you just can never. <laughs> We're losing so many New Jersey <laughs> listeners right now, and I don't fucking care. Just put it on the list of states that most of our listeners have tuned out of. Sure. That we've- insulted before <laughs> that's a long list but yeah no it's 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 not it doesn't make any sense at all god she's so good in this movie she's so good and very um what's the word i'm looking for it, she's very uh almost like empty behind the eyes kind of yeah which i guess makes sense because of where she is in her life in this movie but she she has to put on this front yeah. you yeah. know and and that's that's something you find with like both her and Randy, like, they are completely different people depending on who they have to interact with at the time. Yeah. I mean, the, the most heartbreaking scene for her is when she's going through the club trying to get someone to buy a dance. And I know. And was like, no. And which I, I love. I love that scene because it's shot exactly like all of the Randy scenes, which mm-hmm. is like an over-the-shoulder camera. Like, for the first, like, ten minutes of this movie, we don't really see Randy's face. We yeah. just see everyone else kind of react to him. Yeah. Well, I wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way because I knew we were going to all have the <laughs> same notes. Chomping at the bit to talk about it. Yeah. Let's let's go back, though. Yeah. So, obviously, the movie's about wrestling. Who here 
is mm. or was into wrestling oh hell yeah did you have a favorite wrestler when did you stop oh i was bi- i was big in the stone cold era really, really? Yeah. Okay. oh yeah wwf was my thing i oh, could not yeah. give a shit about the other one yeah i remember my my mother once got me a wwf sticker mm-hmm. and it just had a panda on it she didn't realize that she got me a sticker for the world wildlife foundation <laughs> she was like you like wrestling and i was like well that's yeah all right i got you all these zoo books also <laughs> you tried i know how much you love the WWF. I, I got I got into wrestling like um er, a little earlier, like you know Bret Hart, mm-hmm. Owen Hart, the Hart Dynasty era. Mm-hmm. But then I really got into it around the Stone Cold time. That was great. And ba- like when Undertaker came back as yeah. the American badass, yeah. that was a weird time in in history. I I was into Stone Cold. Uh, Undertaker, Kane, mm. uh, like that era. And then right around the time that like Kurt Angle and all that came out, I was like, I'm out. I yeah. can't, I mean, I'm not into this anymore. It was a very short window. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I wasn't a big Kurt Angle fan. Yeah. Professional wrestling was always something that was like on the periphery for me, but mm-hmm. I never like really locked into it. I didn't really, because it wasn't something that people in my house watched. Yeah. Um, but it was... It was always something that, like, if I was flipping through channels and found it, I'd stay on it for a little while because I was fascinated by it. Yeah. And I think as I got older, I realized, oh, I just like camp. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I think there's something about the theatricality of it that I really respond to. I, I was the same. Like, I would be flipping through channels, and I think it was on USA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if I recognized one of the wrestlers and it was one that I liked, I'd watch it. Yeah, right. And right. then as soon as it was over, continue flipping. I would never tune in. I always thought Sting was cool when i was a kid oh yeah fuck yeah dude nwo new world order and i loved for some reason that movie ready to rumble i watched over and over again damn see that which is not good (laughs) see me (laughs) me and my brother like like we would rent the pay-per-views and everything like we were into that shit oh Oh, yeah i never rented a pay-per-view never had the option to it was last winter i went out there was a we had a rap party Mm -hmm. for this movie i worked on and we went to this bar and in the bar they just had like the 1996 wrestle like royal rumble playing on a screen yeah and i just sit there i I didn't socialize at all that i just watched the fucking royal rumble that whole night it was great right on before they got their own like uh, streaming service for a little while you could actually watch like old Wrestlemania's on Netflix like mm. they had a bunch of them streaming oh yeah I watched a few yeah that became like a thing for my old band uh, like at, I remember, remember crashing at JT's place one time and we were we would just we were watching Wrestlemania like 92 or something like that you mean Halloween casual fan JT <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah has, guy who's heard of some Halloween movies <laughs> yeah, before guy who saw um, Michael Myers mask at the store one time yeah <laughs> <laughs> Guy who is vaguely familiar with James Carpenter. James Carpenter. <laughs> oh, oh, Jimmy Carpenter. <laughs> oh. Just look at him. <laughs> Just look at him. Which I got to say, Mickey Rourke in this movie could probably give Halloween 6 uh, peanut butter chugging Michael mm. a run for his fucking mm. money. He's got a neck. The boy's got a neck. The boy's got a neck. He's got the look. He has got the look nailed in this movie. Yeah, like. Man. The the blonde hair with the roots coming through, it's yeah. it's it's fantastic physique for him. Maybe he's born with it, maybe it's steroid abuse. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the latter. <laughs> so did, speaking of which, did anyone see that um that Florence Pugh wrestling movie? No. Uh, I didn't see it. I think the rocks in it. It really went under the radar as far as i know uh um, yeah i didn't even know about this i didn't see it but apparently it's not that bad that's really. what I, heard. I think nick frost is in it yeah uh the rock produced it too i think you're talking about black widow <laughs> yes <laughs> pretty sure it's uh don't worry darling yeah that's what it <laughs> fighting with my family <laughs> fighting with my family yes and isn't it like a biography of some sort like based on something uh, based on the novel push by sapphire yeah. i think <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's what it is. I'm going to look it up because I haven't seen it, but I'll watch anything that she's in. So, yeah. Cool. Well, we'll just sit here while yeah, we're yeah, testing we'll, Google. Yeah, we'll just watch <laughs> yeah. you, you go ahead and watch the trailer, DC. We'll uh, we'll hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, Nathan, how's work going? You good? It's or? pretty good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool, cool. That's cool. Right on, right on. Let's talk about the opening credits because we mentioned them earlier. Yeah. Did you guys stop to read any of this stuff? Because I yeah. paused a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a sucker for fake headlines in movies because mm-hmm. I, I, and I love the, the amount of work that went into making these feel like legit. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I could totally see these being, like, even in like the back of a comic book or something like that like it just all felt very uh very real yeah there was one um that i paused on that was my f- it's my favorite one of all of them but oh, it yeah. says it's it's supposed to be a quote from from ram and it says when i get bad wolf in that steel cage i'm gonna and there's nothing else oh, there. yeah it's just dot dot <laughs> yeah, dot yeah yeah i love it uh what a cliffhanger uh 
There's also, I don't know if you guys noticed it, there's a nice little um, Reservoir Dogs Easter egg oh. in there because there's a tag team match mm-hmm. and two of the wrestlers' names are Mr. Pink and Mr. White. Oh, nice. I love that. Versus uh, versus Shockwave and Aftermath. <laughs> Just very, <laughs> his first draft on wrestler names. Like, right. Like, like, yeah. No, there's some, but there are some really great. Well, so what's funny is I was writing down what I thought were fake wrestler names throughout the movie and then realized. Turns out they're real. Oh, these, these are real guys yeah. just playing yeah. themselves. Like Necro is like, Necro is like a real guy. Yeah. Yeah, the Necro the Butcher guy, the guy that he has, he fights in jorts, yeah. which is my favorite <laughs> uniform for a right. wrestler. <laughs> Cut off jorts. <laughs> right. And he looks like the, you know, the lead singer of the Mountain Goats mm-hmm. mixed with Richard Schiff, <laughs> just like throwing down. Oh, Jesus Christ. And just, we start this off with fucking hair metal. Mm-hmm. Like, I, this, this soundtrack got me pumped. And, and then the, you know, the Clint Mansell score is like, let's just fucking punch you in the gut right after you hear some Quiet Riot. Mm-hmm. Quiet Riot, Rat. Um, there's a couple in there. I love how we start too with with Ram like being a, absolutely adored by this mm-hmm. trailer park community by the kids. Mm-hmm. Like he fake choke slams a kid. I'm like, man, I really wish he would have choke slammed. I mean, he's like <laughs> down and out in that van, and yeah. then as soon as he opens that door, he's on. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like he has to be. He's got that personality, and I love it's it. Just like when we like right before we hit record, mm-hmm. Nathan's just like. I fucking I, I couldn't even <laughs> I, I could barely get out of bed this morning. Yeah. And then the moment we record, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, just because I sound like that yeah. to you doesn't. <laughs> That's, yeah, also a good point. Also a good point. Uh, another thing about uh, Rod living in the, uh, Ram living in this van mm-hmm. and uh, down by the river and these kids. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I you just you just developed the weirdest <laughs> form of Tourette's ever. Yeah, yeah. I just randomly spit out Chris Farley quotes. <laughs> uh, even living in a trailer park. And even if I knew who this guy was, I don't think I would let my kid play, quote unquote, Nintendo yeah. with this goblin looking man in his RV. Like, no, thank yeah, you. Yeah, who comes out and says, no, just you. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, hey, you want to play Nintendo? Get over here. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't I'll let you be me. Yeah. Adam, no, thank you. Stay away from that man. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although that was, uh, they built like a functioning Nintendo game yeah. for this. And it looked great. Yeah, I'd play it. Yeah, I'd play it. I mean, it's. It looks like it's, I mean, it's the Nintendo. It's got literally two buttons to press. Right. So. Classic. I also love um, how they treat the wrestling in this movie. Yeah. Because everyone is so focused on the theatrics of it, like all the wrestlers. Yeah. There's no discussion about, okay, I'm going to win tonight or you're going to win. It, mm-hmm. it, it's obviously all predetermined. Right. But that's never, you would think in a movie about a wrestler trying to get back on top, like, that would be a part of it. Well, sure. I, now I'm the heel. There's, that happens a couple of times, but yeah, it's definitely not the focus of these conversations. They're trying never to with block him. It. He's yeah. never like that's true. Yeah, like he he wins every match yeah, right, in the true. movie, doesn't he? Yeah, he's always the good guy. He's never the heel. Which mm-hmm. you would think of like a wrestler down on his luck. That's how they turn it around, right? Right. Like now I'm the heel. Now I'm the bad guy. But never. I thought it was interesting. And well, I mean, yeah. according to Marissa Tomei, he has the same hair as Jesus. So you can't make that guy lose. <laughs> that scene is. Tr- uh, trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to say the least. I also like, too, because this is such low, not low tier wrestling, I guess, but like, it's definitely not the big professional stuff you see on TV mm-hmm. that like, there's so much silence in the fights. Yeah. Like, a lot more than you would expect. Nobody's reacting at all until something happens. But when you watch wrestling on TV, it's like constant noise, right? Right. So like, you you can. I'm surprised none of the people in the audience can hear them talking to one another. Like, all right, now you you pin me. Come on, let's right, go. right. Or how no one sees him pull the razor blade out and cut his own forehead, which he did. Well, because they're, they're they're distracting. They're distracted trying to think of their next thing to chant. True, man. True, true. Use his leg. Yeah. Use oh my his God. leg. Yeah. These audiences are so together. Like, yes. the, the, <laughs> you sick fuck. Yeah. You it's sick a, fuck. It's a. It is really a community. They yeah. Have formed. Evil dies tonight <laughs> oh my god oh that would have been perfect no but it is true like say what you will about wrestling but their fans are very committed to the bit like, yeah they're all on the same page for sure <laughs> but no i the wrestling scenes to get all of them all of them are great yeah. like even this opening one with this guy is great but obviously my the best is probably the necro butcher fight Ugh. just because of how it's so tough to watch oh that has that has by far my favorite cut in it it's like yeah take it easy with a staple gun yeah Cut straight to that man <laughs> laying in fucking barbed wire. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The cuts in this scene. Like, it's just a mild mannered discussion between two guys at the locker. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden, he's just getting body slammed into a table full of barbed wire. Oh, uh, and 
The thing about the staple gun, you only really need to put one staple in it to put the dollar bill to your forehead. You could just fake the rest of those. No one's going to see That's it. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're not a, you're not a fucking, like, carnival geek. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Exactly. You gotta commit to the bit, guys. I, I Come guess, on. Man. And that that apparently is, that's a thing he does. Yeah. Like, the, like, in real life, like, that's, like, his shtick is he just takes a lot of punishment. Oh, yeah. No, I looked into it. Um, yeah, this guy, the Necro Butcher, is, mm-hmm. he's, like, the kingpin of this stuff of like the <laughs> the the hardcore wrestling. Yeah, if you embarrass him in front of Vanessa, he'll hit you with a staple gun. <laughs> Which I gotta say though, he's no mankind. He's sure. no mankind. Absolutely not. Mick Foley. I mean that he that's a fucking legend right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. This guy he had um, back in 2020 a Hodgkin's lymphoma, but then like beat it. Like, wow! As of last year, good for him. And yeah, with staples. With, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just stapled that sheer shit force together. of will. But has been wrestling as recently as like five years ago. Wow, like, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. The, the, the wrestling scenes are so visceral for something yeah. that is quote unquote fake. Like, well, and I and I love all of the uh, all of the locker room scenes yeah. where people are talking about. Okay, so I'm going to work the leg. Oh, you guys are doing a leg thing. Okay, well we'll do this. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's they're all comparing notes and making sure that. You know, the fights don't repeat each other for the audience's sake. Wait, you guys remember when David Arquette became a wrestler for a while? Because of Ready to Rumble. I do not. I do not know about this. Yes. I, what? Wait, what? You don't know? <laughs> I do not. Oh, dude, David Arquette, like, got it. Re- like, he be- like he was, like, a- into these hardcore fights. Like, the dude almost died. The dude did, like, a cage match with da- uh, Diamond Dallas Page. What? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, this is news to me. I had no idea. You can find, I th- I feel like there's a documentary on yeah. it somewhere. He still does wrestling. Like, yeah. he, does, he does exhibition wrestling. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, dude, there was this one fight where, like, it was, like, a hard, one of these hardcore matches, and, yeah. like, this dude, like, basically, like... He busted his head open or something, right? No, nah, worse than that. This guy, like, breaks one of those, like, light tubes. Oh, right. Oh. Yes. I've, oh. Yeah, I've seen the clip. And pretty much, like, severed his fucking jugular oh. pretty much. Oh. Right. And he starts to leave, comes back, finishes the match, and then gets, like, driven, rushed to the hospital. Yeah. Oh. Like, straight up, like, gushing blood from his... David Arquette's a badass. Jesus. Yeah, like, what? it was, like, super... Uh, it was super controversial when he joined because people were like, well, this is just a promotional a thing. Yeah. But, like, he stuck around for years. Um, Like, he he just retired, like, a year or two ago. Yeah, June, June of last year. Yeah. Yeah, and he also... Did you know that he also owns the rights to Bozo the Clown? <laughs> This is true. I did not. And he didn't use it in his wrestling <laughs> career? Wow. No, he so and he's a certified Bob Ross instructor. I forgot about that. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's videos of him like on the set of Scream 5 like teaching painting classes to the to the the cast. What he's an a interesting renaissance guy. man. He's a true renaissance man. What an interesting man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Truly wild. Yeah, and by by that point, he'd already been in some stuff. Yeah, oh, like, for sure. Scream was 96. You don't have to do anything after that, buddy. No, dude <laughs> was in a Robert Rodriguez movie in 1994. Yeah. Like, he came out of the gate, like, swinging. Pretty nuts. I still stand by the fact that he was Ryan Gosling before Ryan Gosling. So... That's just oh my, wow! Yeah, so he he was like the pro the proto baby goose. Yeah, yeah. damn, that's his wrestling name. <laughs> <laughs> I the worst part of this match with the Necro Butcher though for me yeah. is the bug spray Ugh. to the eyes. Yeah, I and the fact that we see that beforehand too of them in the dollar store. Like, mm-hmm. you think this will be good? Spraying me in the eyes. Oh, Ugh. dude, I love that scene of them just walking through the dollar. Uh-huh. That yeah. whole sequence is great. Like when they <laughs> he hits him with the pan, drops. He's like, oh fuck, yeah. move on. <laughs> What's the dollar story? What are you going to do? Right before that, we get one of my favorite scenes in the movie, which is this big body Bez lookalike, like with the mobile mm-hmm. pharmacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, show me what you got there. Like, yeah. it's so good. Like, what you want? Yeah. Aronofsky loves his uh, drug scenes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he does. Speaking of Mickey Rourke, though, and like how, like his performance in this movie, mm-hmm. um, does it feel like you to you guys? I mean, it's, po- it's intentional because he's supposed to be like this out of shape mm-hmm. on his last leg kind of wrestler. It feels to me like he's channeling like late stage Steven Seagal. Oh, he's how so out of breath. He is doing his old moves. <laughs> he's so slow. There's so many <laughs> scenes where like the only thing you really hear is like, mm-hmm. and he's just kind of like walking to the bar. Mm-hmm. Like, well, like he when he even when he's in his fights and he like clothes on a guy, he takes like four seconds, puts his hands on his knees. Yeah. He's like. 
oh jesus <laughs> I, and i forgot that like he like straight up vomits yeah. like it's it's truly like it's a disgusting performance yeah. but yeah no yeah. absolutely there's there's a lot of that energy there maybe best performance of his career right yeah Are we all in agreement oh i yeah i would say so i and and i i love mickey rourke i but he's He's transcendent here. Yeah, he's certainly uh, transcendent in real life, too. I don't know if you guys have been keeping up. uh, Uh Yeah. I'd watch that show, by the way, keeping up with Mickey Rourke. (laughs) Um, You know, I had had an idea for a character that came to me when I was drunk the other night. Okay. Uh, Mickey Bjork. (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> is that is that full stop? Where it goes? It's, it's me, Randy the Ram Robinson. <laughs> I, I, I'd watch oh. it. <laughs> I think d- did Lars of Arturo already do that with Dead in the Dark? <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, Mickey Bjork's gonna sweep the nation this year. Oh yeah, look out, <laughs> Christmas 2022. <laughs> um, my favorite little detail because uh, Randy is a, a very. Uh, which how should I describe? <laughs> he's very of his time. Yeah, like, obviously he's trapped in the bottle of the eighties. But my very favorite, blonde, very blonde. Which we really all should have gone blonde for this episode. Yeah. I know it's an audio podcast, but like, uh, how do you know we did, listener? You have no idea, right? <laughs> my favorite little like tidbit about him in his way of life mm-hmm. is when he's taking a shower after. I think it's with the the fight with the necro butcher. Yeah, and he's like cleaning himself. Oh, it's after his his surgery, and he's cleaning himself up, and he gets out of the shower. He goes to take a towel off the towel rack, and behind the towel rack is it's just, just a poster boobs. of a yeah, just a poster of a naked woman. Yeah, <laughs> but like from the neck down, there's no head attached to yeah. it. <laughs> it's so like, of course, this guy would have this. It's such an interesting button to that scene because that's after his heart attack, mm-hmm. and he's like very carefully like bathing himself, and he he like what looks at his scar for a long time in the mirror, which is like yeah. something I've seen my dad do. Like my dad had a really awful heart attack about 10 years ago, uh, a little bit actually more than that, but like it was, it, it's like this really like kind of introspective thing where you have to like occasionally reckon with how different your body is now. Yeah. And the fact that it's a ticking time bomb, right? Like, right. And then he ends the scene by just like, and anyway, here's my secret tits. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, but it's so on brand. For, yeah. Like what you expect of that guy. It's it's great. And I mean, to tie in with that too, I think my favorite aspect of this movie is that it's so simple. Mm-hmm. It's literally like an A to Z plot. Uh, you know, about this guy who's past his prime, but there's so many layers in the performances in the direction, like even him just walking, like there's lots of scenes of him just walking. Oh yeah. Um, like, especially when he gets uh, hired in the, the deli at the restaurant and he's walking down all the different back corridors of this grocery store. Imagining the crowd psyching him up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like he's going into a wrestling match and like, yeah. it's a long shot and there's a bunch of stuff like that, but it's amazing. Like on, you get so much character, mm. like, you know, Mally and I have been to film school, and what's the the one thing they try to drill into your head? It's story Don't first, go right? Blonde. Oh, or that too, yeah, um, or the one eighty roll or whatever. Enter your own joke here, but. It's amazing on how on how so many tentpole big budget films don't recognize that anymore. Right. And I know that's that's film snobbery, but like this is such a simple movie. It's such a low budget simple movie, right? And it's so much more compelling. And nothing like even when nothing's happening, when it's just Marissa Tomei trying to get someone to buy a lap dance. Yeah, it's visually n- nothing's really happening, but it's so compelling. Or this scene where this kid is describing Call of Duty Four, and yeah. he feels so like out of his depth, yeah. trying to understand the conversation. What does he call it? He call call in duty, or what does he call? Call in <laughs> call call, call, call call in duty. Call in yeah. duty. That's my wrestling name. Call, call in duty. duty. Oh my god! <laughs> but also, you have this kid describing like an S and S soldier. Yes. Like he also doesn't really know what he's talking about. And there's just all these like little tiny details that make the world feel lived in. I, I think it's less that he doesn't understand what that is, and he's like. This is what they're doing in video games now. Right. We just have A and B. Yeah. And it's two guys fighting <laughs> and two dimensions, eight pixels or eight bit pixels, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that's all the pixels we needed back then. Yeah. This is entertainment enough. This Nintendo that still works, which is immaculate condition, by the way. Like Absolutely. Well, if you only have one game. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> I guess let's talk about Todd Berry, who I absolutely love. Oh, man. Big dogging Randy the whole time. Yes. Yes. Every scene he's in. I mean... We, we got to talk about his big scene for me, which is 
watching porn at work. <laughs> oh my god, insane. And not only watching porn at work, but then having the nerve to scold somebody as big as Mickey Rourke is in this movie. For not knocking first. Yes, and treating him like a child, like, go mm-hmm. out and try again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I love such a love No, it. My, my big moment for Todd Berry was when... And this feels so fucking real for every shitty retail job I've ever had. But like when when Randy cuts his hand open, mm-hmm. oh, there's customers here. Yeah, he's like, come on, Randy, there's customers. Yeah, that's so true. Don't, nothing in front of the customers. Oh, it's so yeah. accurate. Yeah. Which I will say the previous deli scene. Love it. Where like his first day where he's like really getting into it mm-hmm. is yeah. so fucking good. Oh, I love it's it. great. Yeah. It makes me really happy. Like I'm like, he's doing it, man. Like he's crushing. There's a joy to it. That scene and then the scene with him and Pam Mm -hmm. in the bar Mm -hmm. are maybe my two favorite scenes because they're just like the cutest things on the fucking planet. He enjoys that first day at the deli counter so much that he immediately goes and starts canceling his fights because he's he's like, I got this. I'm okay. Like, I'm going to make it up with my daughter. Everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And then one motherfucker. Fucker uh, recognizes him. Yeah. yeah. Man, I got to tell you, I had a fear of those deli slicers even before this movie came Absolutely. out. Absolutely. only solidified it because, oh my God, it's exactly what I imagined. Oof. And I've had to use them before and I hated it. I have not. I have. I can't. They're, they're not. They're very safe. They're, they're very like, safe. Yeah, boy. I, I've used one. They're safe, but also terrifying. I mean, it's, it is <laughs> just an open blade, like mm-hmm. right there. So, yeah. Yeah. Nathan, you should never go around one. I won't. <laughs> okay, cool. And as, as charming as he is in that first scene at the deli, though, it is like- Man, this this dude we get so canceled. He's a lot. He's so cancelable. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then just harassing Marissa Tomei at work, man. Like, first of all, harassing women at work, not a good look. But second of all, you're in a strip club and there's a certain decorum you have to have. <laughs> and uh Yeah, don't don't touch the strippers and don't, don't wear touch. sweatpants. Yes. Don't and I don't know. I mean, I th- doesn't she have a, a stage name as well? I can't, it's not Cassidy. Cassidy. Cass- yeah, you can't call her Pam at work. No. <laughs> you know what? Like, when he goes to visit her, we see him go into the bathroom and, like, primp himself a little mm-hmm. bit. And you just know that he, like, his balls now smell like the hand soap in that bathroom. Oh, like, that's oh. Nathan. Yeah. He's that guy. No, he's right. He's right. That is definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why are you and booing it's, me? It's, I'm it's right. Not even the, <laughs> it's not even the foamy soap. It's the pink one. And he's like, let me lather this <laughs> right. up. Oh. Also, this guy drinks coffee at the strip club. Yeah, that's a bold move. Yeah. Real bold move. Absolutely. But- I also got to say, mm-hmm. as much as I like Mar- Marissa Tomei in this movie, mm-hmm. she is- You tread fucking lightly, <laughs> sir. At least in one moment of a, this, actually this scene right here where he gets confrontational with her. Yeah. Slightly delusional because she has a line where she goes, you think that I'm like this stripper and I'm not. And I'm like, lady, with all due respect. Uh-huh. You are a stripper. (laughs) No. You could say you don't want to be a stripper. They're both in different kinds of denial. Oh, you know. Marissa Tomei is a fucking saint. Y'all shut (laughs) the fuck up. Also, I love that David Arquette's Wikipedia page is just still pulled out. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. (laughs) Skipping through it while we were all talking. He's like, oh, I'm going to keep keep this up for later. Let me just uh, bookmark this. (laughs) You know who else is amazing in this movie? Uh, Evan Rachel Wood. So good. Totally forgot she's in this movie. Me too. Yeah. And- like we get another one of these like unspoken perfect moments when uh when Stephanie's girlfriend question mark yes. opens the door mm-hmm. yeah that's what i thought yeah. so like when but like he there's so much on her face when he says tell her her dad's here yeah like her you know Stephanie's partner is sat through years of stories of her unpacking her trauma oh yeah you could tell evan rachel wood is unloaded on her yeah. about her her dad <laughs> for oh sure. she just has that look she answers the door with this look like oh this motherfucker this guy mm-hmm. for real there's yeah. no way you could confuse him with anyone other than who evan rachel wood has described at this absolute like, well yeah you oh, yeah. he's not the male bad like no it's clearly <laughs> you yeah you open the door and that face is there yeah you yeah. know you know who this is it's whiplash the guy with a face that could <laughs> Cut, cut diamonds absolutely right. yeah oh hey marv from sin city's at the door <laughs> you didn't tell me your dad was marv from sin city <laughs> yeah no i completely agree and i also like it's kind of out of i almost out of character i would think for him that he knows that she's probably gay yeah and he doesn't have like a ugh kind of 
like when he's talking about it with Mercy Tomei, you would think a guy like that, yeah, that hyper masculine, right, would be like, oh, I can't have a gay daughter, but he he's cool with it. Well, you, I do love that. That's not where that goes, but I also think that it's weird that that's when he somehow is like observant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not at any other time, just, right? Is this girl gay or what? Right. <laughs> Um, I also like the shopping scene with him and Marissa Tomei oh, because precious. it's so funny that it is exactly the kind of jacket he would pick out for her. And I, <laughs> right. I love the little reveal that he got both. Like that was, it and, looks like a stride gum package. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that he, he played it cool. He's like, gave her the green jacket first. If she likes it, great. That's yeah. the gift. If she does it, oh, that's not the real gift. I got a real one over here. Right. Yeah. Have a back. Always have a backup Smooth. plan. Smooth. Yeah. And I love that when they cut to the boardwalk, she's immediately wearing the new peacoat. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I mm-hmm. love that so much. Yeah. So I, I mean, Aronofsky loves his 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 boardwalk scenes for, for sure. sure. Lot, lots in his movies. Yeah. Um, I don't really have much else to talk about except for the ending. Do you guys have anything? Uh, I just want to point out that the curtains in his trailer are fucking pointless. Yep, they right. don't do a damn thing. There's a whole sh- scene of him closing the curtains. And I'm like, dude, it's the same amount of light in there. And I want to talk about Bob. Yeah. That man has no shame. Like, mm-hmm. he is a salesman through and through. He sure is. He sure is. Mm-hmm. He's just trying to sell a car to one of the guys working the show. Yeah. I love that scene. <laughs> that scene's so funny. And I love, like, kind of as the scene's, like, fading out, he's like, hey, how about something pink? <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's like, this man is just a fucking salesman. I love it. The hustle doesn't stop, guys. <laughs> right. The auto king of Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> he gives Pam the uh, Randy the Ram action figure. Love it. And we see her kid playing with it. And mm-hmm. Randy pins Starscream. And I, all I thought was, I really want to see that actually yeah. as a movie. <laughs> oh, Transformers <laughs> v. Randy. <laughs> Randy. Jesus. Dawn of Justice. Before we get to the ending, the only other note I wanted to mention, it's, it's, it's just something funny that I observed, is in that first fight mm-hmm. at, at the movie, I don't, you guys probably saw it too, but just when he's getting, he's helicoptering that guy and the, and the ref gets kicked in the face, mm-hmm. got a good chuckle out of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. <laughs> Pretty good. That's a, that's a classic That's a classic wrestling move Oh, yeah. Right the there. ref always right in the <laughs> line of danger. It's like, la, 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 get fucked. <laughs> When he hooks up with that that girl like halfway through the movie or towards the end of the movie, mm-hmm. she she propositions him with party like a fireman party, yeah. which is an insane line. Yeah. What does it mean? I don't know. The subtitles oh, she's like the moaning. The subtitles are amazing for that. The subtitles yep. say imitating a siren. <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny and i just never considered it <laughs> is that not how you guys do it because that's no okay sorry me neither the most relatable randy is in this whole movie to me is when he sees a ferret and dips out yeah he's just like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's like nope that's it oh man waking up in a f- that that makes that scene so much more gross though because he does wake. she i mean he wakes up in what's clearly her son's fireman room right i no, 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 thank you. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Well, let's talk about the ending. Yeah. I'll do a, a quick recap for everybody. So, he's agreed to come back and do a rematch mm-hmm. um, against a guy he fought 20 years ago, the Ayatollah. So racist. Yeah. So, I didn't, I didn't want to bring it up, but that's the guy's name. But also also fully accurate to 80s wrestling. Yeah, it's very oh, much- 100%. Um, what's his name? That had like the same kind of- uh, like Yokozuna, is that who I'm thinking of? Yeah, that came out with the flag and everything. The Iron Sheik, the Iron Sheik, ah, that's right. Yeah, would come out with the, yeah. Who, by the way, has one of the most insane Twitter feeds. Odd. Hinge, unhinged <laughs> Twitter feed. All caps, just fuck you, famous yeah. person. Fuck you, like, pussy. I'll shit in your mouth. <laughs> it's so, yeah. It's wild. Please follow the Iron Sheik on Twitter. <laughs> you know, no, don't, don't, don't yeah. feed into it, guys. <laughs> um, so, you know, Rams agreed to do this rematch, even at the behest of his doctor who said, look, you can't wrestle anymore, dude. Your, your heart is just going to give out. You can't take it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's kind of come to to heads with both his daughter because he missed their date together. And she told him, I literally never want to see you again. It is over with. Yeah. Um, yeah. And kind of a similar thing with Marissa Tomei where he's like, will you come to my match? And she's like, I can't. I can't. And they have that confrontation. I can't date a, yeah, I can't can't date a customer. Date a customer. Yeah. Um, and so he's like, fuck it. The only place I feel like, like while I'm alive is in the ring where people are shouting my name. Yeah. So he goes to do this rematch. And the only fault I have in the movie mm. is this ending scene with him and Marissa Tomei. Really? Because I feel like maybe Aronofsky doesn't have enough confidence in the audience to remember how much is at stake with him wrestling again. Because she's like, but Rim, your heart 
you can't wrestle because of your heart. I'm like, oh. yeah, no, I, I watched it. Yeah. I saw the scene already. To me, I think that is just literally showing how far gone he is that yeah. he won't even take this last chance that he's given. I guess that's fair. I, I don't know. I just wish it was less is more. But I, I see what you're saying, though. Yeah. I mean, because we're already going to get the scenes in the wrestling match where he's right. gripping his chest and everything. I don't right. Know. Exactly. I don't know. Anyways, he, he comes out to the crowd. Mm-hmm. He gives this big speech about how he'll keep coming back as long as everyone's there, still cheering uh, him on. Yeah. And... Before the match really even gets going, Marissa Tomei just leaves. Yeah. And throughout, throughout the match, he's, you know, he first of all, he's going against what he's supposed to be doing. Right. Agreed upon with his uh, opponent. And then... No, he's he's committing suicide in the scene. Oh, yeah. I mean, he is, he is... He tells her the only place I get hurt is, you know, in the real world. Yeah. Yeah. And... You know, he's he's clutching his chest. He's mm-hmm. hearing uh, his ears ringing and everything. And he decides, fuck it, I'm going to... This is it. Yeah. And he goes to pin uh, the Ayatollah. He gets on the, the top ropes, which is like his signature move. Yeah. Tears in his eyes uh, to the full cheer of this crowd. Woo! Makes a leap. And we kind of just cut to black. Don't see what happens. But, Oof. I mean, we're, we all... We can all be in agreement, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it has been confirmed by the director yeah. in a Reddit AMA. Yeah, it's not up for debate. Right, it's not he dies. as ambiguous as a lot of other movies. Yeah, I also love leading up to this match that, like, early in the movie, we saw his like pre-performance ritual. Like, he goes, sits in a tanning bed, he gets his hair Ugh. worked on in a salon, and now, yeah. which do tanning beds freak anyone else out, or yes. is it just me? I can't. Okay, I can't cool. do it. Yeah, after uh, Final Destination, what three? Yeah, four. I, or I still know what you did last summer. Yeah, I, yeah. I was gonna go. I still know. Or any of the other various tanning bed tests. <laughs> How dare you lock Jennifer Love Hewitt in a tanning bed? <laughs> that's the new. Do, that's the new. No one puts baby in the corner. How dare you? <laughs> no one puts J Love in a tanning bed. <laughs> How dare you lock Jennifer Love Hewitt in a tanning bed? Yeah. No, I I never like tanning beds. No, no, thank, no you. thank you. Not for me. No, yeah. The, the Silver Linings playlist officially is anti tanning bed, <laughs> and also New Jersey. I'd rather just get cancer the good old fashioned way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the Jenna McCarthy of getting cancer, not from a tanning bed. So, D- what? Wait, anyway. wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Jenny McCarthy? We'll gloss over that. We're not gonna gloss over that one. <laughs> we just lost Jenny McCarthy as a listener. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. Anything else, guys, before we get into all the uh, the wrap-up segments here? I love that he changes his entrance song. I think mm-hmm, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. And that song was donated for free. Yeah, because Axel really, like, loved the movie. Oh, did we talk about the... We didn't talk about the the fact that Nick Cage almost starred in this movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that I think this was the right choice. <laughs> Depending on who you ask, you get a different answer, right? Yes. Because Aronofsky apparently always wanted Rory, yeah, and the and the producers wanted Cage, and then Cage felt like he didn't have enough rehearsal time. Yeah, it's like which speaking kind of semi related. This and Black Swan started out as the same movie. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Originally, the daughter was going to be like a dancer oh. or something in New York, and then as Aronofsky researched that, he was like, "Oh, this is this its, is own, its own, thing. own thing." Wow, I that's cool. I think we talked about this in the Black Swan episode, but I cannot recall. I think we did. Interesting. Which, that being said, what would it be like if you put Mickey Rourke and Black Swan and Natalie Portman in this movie? Mm. What's that world like? Whoever wins, we lose. <laughs> What if you put uh, Mickey Rourke in Raising Arizona and Nick Cage in this movie? Holy shit. Oh, my God. Mickey Rourke in Vampire's Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Now we're fucking talking. All right. Or Bad Lieutenant. Yeah. <gasps> Nick Cage in Angel Heart. That actually would be great. <laughs> that fits more in line. Which actually, now I'm thinking of it, is is pretty much just Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. Yeah, right. I'm thinking about it. Anyway. Mally, was it... Was it Sweet Child of Mine or was it Welcome to the Jungle when we were playing pool in LA and they just kept playing the same Guns N' Roses song over and over for some reason? It was literally both of those in That's succession right. over and over. Uh, and honestly, it worked for me because yeah, I yeah. went on a hot streak It was pretty great because you hear both of these songs have very iconic intros. Sure. And as soon as you hear one within like the first two seconds, you're like, Again? again? <laughs> yeah. Not complaining, but not. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, victory lap, let's fucking go. <laughs> and again, I went on a hot streak on billiards that evening, so it worked for me. That was also the same night that I couldn't stop urinating, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I had that happen at a birthday dinner. We were at a sushi restaurant and See You Again from Furious 7. <laughs> what? Played for 30 solid minutes. <laughs> Somebody was doing uh, a John Mulaney on you, right? Right, and I told, I, I was like, my dad was like, this song is so much longer than I thought it was. And I, like, I was like, fuck, it's still happening. That's how I feel about the Guns N' Roses song, though. It's like, is this song still going? Well, everyone knows that's that's the modern day stairway to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they put that up in uh, guitar uh, guitar centers now. You can't play that song. You can't play See You Again. <laughs> Imagine a bunch of bros plugging in a guitar center. <laughs> yeah. Uh. All right. Oh, that's good. Well, let's let's talk about uh, one of my favorite segments on the show, Prop Cop. Oh, and for new listeners, this is where we look at all of the different uh, props and all of the different uh, set design, anything tangible in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we just say, I want to take that as my own. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know what, uh, Nathan, I'll let you go ahead and go first. What prop do you want to keep from The Wrestler? I want uh, Mickey Rourke's fantastic collection of thermal sweaters. Okay. Mm. (laughs) He has so many of those like boat neck thermals and I want all of them. You gotta stay toasty. Those thermal sweaters are going to smell like hot dog water and Old Spice. Okay. But you do you. (laughs) Chocolate starfish in the hot dog flavored water. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Or that. Or that. Uh, Mally, what about you? Prop cop? Oh, I want the deli slicer. (laughs) (laughs) Pre or (laughs) post-accident? I mean, preferably pre, but I could disinfect it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would actually be pretty useful. Yeah, man. I would, like, fucking cut, yeah, cut my own meats. I don't know. I mean, any Seinfeld fans, you can use it for a lot of things. (laughs) (laughs) You you need to, you know, your heels are uneven. Cut that bad boy down. There you go. (laughs) No, like shoes, Nathan, not your actual feet, you jackass. (laughs) That uh, I I I just want the Ram action figure. Yeah, I it just was perfectly. It's it's perfect. It's a it's a perfect like that's the prop I can, I can steal from set if I worked on this. Sure, movie. sure. <laughs> you know what I mean, um, so th- I I think that would be great to add to the collection. So, um, all right. Well, what about bit part? Mm. This is of course where we take an extra, a smaller role in the movie, preferably a, uh, an unnamed character, and we recast that character with ourselves. Mally, who who are you gonna who's gonna be your bit part? I want to be one of the background strippers. Okay, <laughs> sexy. Oh, season six is getting lusty. Heated, Nathan. Um, I want to play the first ref. He gets kicked. He in gets the- a couple of lines. <laughs> yeah, or he's just like, hey, I don't know, should I step in? And then yeah, he gets kicked in the face. It's good. <laughs> I want to be the quote unquote handsome guy <laughs> that has to catch the egg salad like a football yeah. that Randy tosses. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Go deep. I love that he's in that scene. He's like, come on, go down, handsome. And he's like, what? Just get my egg salad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I love that he calls one of the old women a spring chicken. Oh, uh-huh. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> he's great. He's great in that scene. Um, well, the whole reason we're here, what is the silver lining to the wrestler? 100% honesty. I had something for prop cop, pick me up, bit part. I forgot about silver lining. <laughs> I, you know what? It's not unheard of. It's, it's been a long hiatus, yeah, it's, guys. It's honestly the part I think least about when, I, when we do these episodes. Oh, wait. I got I got one. I got one. I got okay, one. Okay. Go ahead. Marissa, Marissa Tomei's son got a new toy. That's there you nice. go. Nathan? It's tough, man. But I, I mean, as, as bleak as it is, Randy goes out on his own terms. God damn it. I mean, it's the obvious one, but it's yeah. like the only one. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, how about this? If you... If you, I know, if you, if you I don't know die wrestling, in the ring, uh, <laughs> that's actually what I was going to ask. If you die in the ring, are you a redneck? No, <laughs> does that still does that count as a win if you pin the opponent and you die? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, well, I guess we don't see him get we don't see him pin mm. um, the Ayatollah, so he could have just died right then and there, f- jumping off the mat, off the ropes. <laughs> He's dead before he hits the mat. Yeah, he dies in he, he, he dies he in did. midair. <laughs> I was going to say he won his rematch, but I guess we don't know for sure. So the camera, the camera turns around and he just flies forward into the audience. <laughs> he like slides across the mat, just fucking meat crowns across the ring. Fuck me, that's so funny. I was going to say they keep the same shot of him jumping over the camera, and it holds as long as it does. Mm-hmm. But then they, they turn around, and he's already just dead on the ground. <laughs> Fantastic. Wait, have, did you not say for the post credits, DC? Oh shit. <laughs> Nick Fury tries to recruit him, but he's already dead. <laughs> Wake up. 
Was that your Samuel L. Jackson nope. impression? <laughs> <laughs> wake up. Yeah, wake that's wake what, up. That's what he sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'll go with the more positive idea. I say I think he wins that rematch, right? Mm-hmm. Because I, I, yeah, unless he dies midair, I think he pins <laughs> he pins him. So he could, he has. Uh, I'm assuming an unbeatable record. Yeah, like he's he's undefeated. Perfect record, absolutely. What a way to go out, right? Yeah. Yo, he's fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, let's talk about if you watch the wrestler mm. and you're not feeling uh, too great afterwards. What's a double feature people should do yeah. with the wrestler? What's a pick me up movie alternative, a movie they should watch after the wrestler? Nathan, what do you got? Uh, I would recommend people follow this up with another movie that features Mickey Rourke in a small role as a character named Tool. Oh boy, 2010's The Expendables. Uh, oh Jesus Christ! <sighs> fucking awful yeah. movie, but yeah. like there are it has some it has some bright shining moments in it. Okay, uh, Maui. Um, Seinfeld season seven episode fourteen, <laughs> The Cadillac. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic special uh, hour long episode guest starring Marissa Tomei. Oh, nice, right. where she plays herself. I'm actually going to uh, with Marissa Tomei movie as well. Mm. Uh, and one where she dies instead of Mickey Rourke, and we're gonna go with No Way Home. Oh yeah, why not? Spider Man No Way Home. Yeah, <laughs> no, the other No Way Home. <laughs> I don't know. It took me a second. I was like, oh, Homeward, <laughs> Homeward Bound Three, I No love Way that Home. Thinking the same joke. <laughs> yeah, um, I was considering The King of Staten Island because I love Bill Burr in that movie, mm. but that's really the best part of that movie to me. Yes. So yeah, agreed. Well, that's that's the wrestler. Um, do you guys recommend this movie? Oh, one hundred percent, absolutely. I I think you know I feel like you do have to be in a little bit of a a, a particular mood. Sure. Yeah, don't wake up on a casual Sunday morning and watch it like I did. <laughs> Fuck. Put, put on your slippers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I and I'll say don't double feature it with the movie we're doing next week, like I did. Oh yeah. Because yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, without question, it's it's as close to a perfect movie as you can get. And for as little that really does happen in terms of the plot, the pacing is incredible. Like oh, it's it does fantastic. not overstay its welcome at all. I think I might was I think it was Nathan at the beginning that said it's your new favorite Aronofsky movie, and I think I might agree with you. Yeah, I th- it's just so good. As much as like I don't want to be like roped in with Nathan because you know of your reputation, I get it. <laughs> sure, but. Um, <laughs> my reputation. Yeah, <laughs> great film. <laughs> reputation. I might be inclined to agree. Mm. I, I, maybe Requiem. If someone else said it, would you agree? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. I could be swayed, but I don't know because the Black Swan is really good. Black too. Swan's great. Yeah. Let's just let's just not pick our favorite child. How about that? Okay. How about we just agree? Sure. They're all great. Um, except for Noah. Dustin, you've told me you have a favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's not a... Uh, <clears throat> shut up. Anyway, um, if you, listener, have some if feedback... You. <laughs> if you... I gotta stop doing that. If you... You must be a redneck. <laughs> you must. If you have feedback for the wrestler... Keep it to your fucking self. <laughs> <laughs> or if you feel the need to, you can send it into the Silver Blindings playlist at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Um, we, of course, ask that you uh, subscribe, rate, leave us feedback, all of that good stuff. But the biggest thing you could do for us mm. is share our show with your friends and family on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and unfortunately, Facebook. <laughs> um, and we're also on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Blindings playlist. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a plethora of information there. Now, Ooh, plethora. Someone read the dictionary this morning. Oh, it's the word of the day. Um, the only thing I got left, fellas, uh, is a clue for next week's episode. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yay. Which, Nathan, is your pick. That's right. So what you got? Next week, we have such sights to show you. Mm. And also, kicking off our unnamed all horror themed October month. Oh, it's unnamed <laughs> this year? Yeah, we don't have a name for it. Well, okay. we never had a name for it. <laughs> we didn't call it Spooky Linings? <laughs> well, well, yes. Oh, wait, we did. <laughs> we did. We did cover art, but I guess we never officially called the event Spooky okay. Linings. That, yeah, that sticks. Yeah, the Spooky Linings. Pretty sure we did on yeah. multiple <laughs> episodes, we? but sure, DC. I, I so. don't remember. We're 130 something episodes in. I don't remember. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I have put episodes on the schedule of stuff we've already done before. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess Spooky Linings kicks off next week yeah man i'm very excited so uh until then anything else fellas any other uh 
bit of business. Bang your head. Bang your head indeed. <laughs> Rest in peace, Oatmeal. And, and I guess Randy. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Randy. And as always, use, use his leg. Use his leg. You, use his his leg. Leg. you, you sick, sick fuck. Fuck, <laughs> fuck you, New Jersey. New Jersey. Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters!